Good morning, good evening, and good day, people. How's it going? It's Grizzilla here, and I hope you're all well. And you join me on camera for the moment. Um, today, I'm just going to do a video on how to. Uh, basically, just a short initial video. Now, this is the first video. Now, I am planning to do more of these as well for you. What I'd like in the comments from you is just what you're struggling with, what you're having problems with. If I've not addressed it in this video, then please comment below on what you're struggling with in Naval, and I will try and address it and try and work out what how to fix it, basically. Um, today, for instance, we had a player in the uh, in the Destroyer game, and they'd bought the Carl Gauster, and they were a PS4 user, and they were getting their asses kicked, because, well, it, it's... <laughs> just this message comes through there, Forest 440. Um, it, it, it's very tricky for new players because, well, how do you play it? Like, there, there's no real big information. So what I'm going to do today is just a basic rundown of initial things, just basic things. So we're just going to go into a test sale. So when you when you get your research tree, um, you'll have your your boats there. So you start off with your reserves, of course. And then you, if you've got your premiums there over there, of course, blah, 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 you put them in there. Um, so first of all, we're just going to go for a test sale. So if you just uh, click on the boat, go to test sale, like test drive, basically. And then you can choose realistic battle, um, all, all your different battle types. Now, one thing that I do advise for people is AP is a good shell. But HE tends to work better in some circumstances. The uh, L4.5 BDZ is actually a really decent shell because it's armor piercing, um, it's got some decent armor piercing, but also it's got some good post fragmentation. However, the 45 KZ actually has more penetration value to it and has a bigger explosive. Um, so it's kind of hard to work out what your favorite's gonna be. Personally, I prefer the um, prefer this shell. Uh, they've both got very similar, uh, well, they've both got the same velocity. However, the um, uh, Panzer Granat 43 does have a little bit better velocity. So looking at velocities and things like that, and that will change from nation to nation. Um, you do want to have a bit of armor piercing, though, because a little bit of armor penetration does help a bit. Now, for your main guns, sorry, for your machine guns, things like that, I'm going a armor piercing most of the time, and I find that works really well. Um, armor piercing tends to be the best option in that regard for what I've found at the moment with small patrol boats and things like that. So we're just going to take the Galster out, first of all. So we'll, we'll go out to the uh, test battle. And we will start off here. So first of all, you can change your target priority. So we're going to go to controls. Now, this is going to vary on system to system. If you're using an Xbox or a PS4, then you, know, you have to change controls a bit differently. We have things like um, separate engine controls. Now, this is great if you're you've got keyboards and stuff and you can use it to turn the ship without rudders things like that there's there's lots of advanced controls but we're just going to go over basic controls today so first of all one of the main things you want to do is have a um have sort of a target system you want your target system to be correct um so down in weaponary no, weaponary um it should be on x actually Oh no, no, there we go. No, we have got it there. Uh, we want X to basically be lock on target. Actually, I do want to change that because we want that to be uh, for the main guns as well if we switch to other guns. But basically, we want to have our lock on system as X. Now, that's a standard control, I think, and it's somewhere in there. Um, I think it's under common. There we go. So lock on target. Now, you, you can have whatever it is. I think default it's something differently, but lock on target is very important. We need that there because that's going to help us get our target locked on and also help us range find. So manual correction, I've got it set to my mouse wheel. Now, of course, you can set this to other options. However, the mouse wheel works very well. So we're just going to head out and we're just going to select the destroyer over in the distance. As you see, I've got my target lock on. And what this will do is when you're actually sailing, if you're, say, shooting in front of the target, your your gun position won't move. So it'll keep locked onto the target. So basically, it's like a, a lock-on system. It almost feels like an um, uh, auto-aim, almost. Um, but 
Once we've got that locked on, we can actually get our target distance corrected. And as you can see, shooting distance within correction, we can then change that with our mouse wheel up and down. Uh, so currently it's saying that the distance is 4870. So we'll trust that and we'll fire off first salvo. Now, aiming is also an important thing. You need to know where to aim on a ship. You want to basically Try aim here. for, as you see, a little bit too far. So we could try updating the distance again. It's coming to 4,800. Four, we know that's a bit much, so we're going to drop it down to 4,810. Four, um, but aiming, we want to aim towards the front section of the ship, just under these guns, because that's where the ammunition is going to be. And the other ammunition stash is going to be here. We could also take out the engines, which are in the midship. Uh, the rudder controls at the uh, bow, of, at the stern of the ship, sorry. Um, the uh, control section, the the, the, um, the bridge, you know, that'll take out your captain, so they'll lose st uh, steering and drive, basically. So aiming at different parts of the ship do offer different options. So we're going to start off fire off another salvo here, and we're going to aim it just on the waterline. Hopefully we're going to hit. Now your shells do have a bit of dispersion, and there is that sort of... Um, RNG element to it. However, as you just see there, we get a hit directly on the um, ammunition of the ship and we take it out instantly. And that's what you want to be aiming for, is that sort of instant kill. Uh, the ammunition, especially on destroyers. Now it's a bit hard on moving targets of course, so we've got the PT-6 over here and it's moving. So our main guns are going to swing around and we need to aim a little bit in front because of course it's moving. But you need to just get that lead correct for it. So as you see here, we've now got it locked on. And I'm not doing anything here. It's moving itself automatically. Now I'm going to reckon here is a good place to shoot. Nope, a little bit far. So now I can move it in a little bit. Fire off another salvo. Move it in a little bit more. Get the range corrected again. Fire off another salvo. Now we just got a hit on the top there of the boat. So we didn't do too much damage. And as you can see, we're struggling here because it is quite close. We're going to manually aim now. A little bit too clo close for the shooting. And it's very tricky. So, you know, you're constantly updating it. So we're at 1,000, we fire off, and we get a good hit on the bow. Now, because we're using this shell, the APHE, um, we're not going to get as much fragmentation damage on these smaller ships. Uh, because this is basically an arm piercing variant. And as you see, we're basically going straight through the boat. We're over penetrating, basically. Panzergranat, the fuse is a little bit easier because it hits the engine compartment there, so it do cause a lot of damage. But if we go through the bow of the boat again, we will over penetrate. And this is where a standard HE shell comes into effect. Armor piercing, though, does tend to do a bit more damage overall. So. It's kind of a hard place to talk, you know, what's best. Um, in my opinion, H, the pure HE shell is a better option on small patrol boats uh, because you just cause a lot of fragmentation yeah, damage. Right. However, if you've got the uh, Panzergrad 43 loaded up, it's going to do quite well. But at long distances, I do tend to find either the 45 BDZ or the Panzergrad 43 do tend to work for the Carl Gaster. Again, we do a shot, easy target. Next up we've got movement controls. So, when you start your boat, you'll see you have one third ahead, two thirds ahead, standard ahead, full ahead, and then flak ahead. Now flak ahead is almost like your uh, war emergency power. Basically the fastest your boat will go is, is using up all the coal and using everything. Full ahead's a slightly slower mode, you just go a little bit slower. Um, generally most people are going to be moving at flak ahead at all the time. And then you've got your rudder controls, left and right, of course. And they're pretty self-explanatory. One thing you do have to watch for is land masses, of course, because it's very easy to run aground. Uh, what you can do in that section, of course, is go full back to try and slow yourself down. Now, next up are controls. So, we've got an aircraft in the air. Now, what we can do is we can switch to our secondary guns ourselves. So, right now, we're switching to our AA guns. And with that, I've got it set to Alt 2, Alt 3, Alt 4 for my different guns. Now, he's above us. It's a bit hard to hit him there. So we're just trying to swing our AA guns around. And 
as you can see, you can fire off your secondaries. It's very simple. Now, the other thing you can do is set your guns to target modes. Now, for me, it's on E as standard. And if you look in the bottom left corner, you'll see currently there's a circle with a cross in it. Now it's got planes and boats in it. And what this will do is it will mean that my anti-aircraft guns will target themselves. So we'll switch back to our main guns, and that will allow my anti-aircraft guns to target themselves. Now when you actually select the target, it's going to be slightly more accurate, because the gunners are basically only aiming at one target. So as you see here, our AI gunners are doing a very good job, and take out that aircraft very quickly. Now my secondary gunners are also now firing at this cargo ship. And the secondary gunners are going to shoot lots of times and at different things. They're going to basically want to shoot at anything around you. Uh, however, when you've got it manually set, you can basically make them pick and choose what targets you're going to go for. I'm going to turn off those gunners now. Uh, you can, of course, set them to just ships, just aircraft, or uh, nothing, of course. Now, finally, in this little video, I'm just going to talk about torpedoes. Now, this is finally in this video for destroyers. Um, I'm going to talk about torpedoes. So. Torpedoes, as you can see, they have a blind spot. So you have to get your torpedoes in the right spot to fire. And as you can see, there's only a certain arc you can shoot from. Now your torpedoes have a sort of general length, a general distance that they can go. Um, it's quite a long distance. So I think it's around about 600 meters or something as standard. They're, you know, they're, they're gonna keep going across most maps. You do get torpedo upgrades, which means you can get a longer torpedo range of 800 sorry, 8,000 meters. Um, I think it's about 6,000 to start or 5,000 or something like that. Uh, so when you when you get that, of course, um, it just makes them go longer, but it does slow them down a little bit. So they use the fuel a little bit more, econ more uh, economically, but they go a bit slower. Sometimes faster torpedoes are better because it's harder to avoid them if they're going faster. Now, for me, as standard, Q is my aiming system for torpedoes. And what you'll get when you lock onto a target is that little white line, which is basically the indicator of where you're going to need to aim to hit the ship. Now, again, with torpedoes, you've got the option of hitting different areas. Now, if you hit the, the bow or the stern of the ship, you're going to cause a bit more damage. If you hit the centre of the ship, sometimes you won't cause as much damage. Uh, things like destroyers may survive it a little bit easier. They may survive hits from smaller torpedoes as well. So we're going to launch a torpedo now, oh. and space to launch torpedo, not fire button, you idiot, what are you doing? So our torpedo's launched, and it's in the water. Now another thing, just as a tip really, and a really useful one, is when you're actually sailing, is look for the white lines, because that's torpedoes. Now your torpedo indicator will come on, and you'll see the torpedo when it gets close enough. However, sometimes it's too late and you're going to die. So if you actually keep an eye out for those white lines, you can avoid torpedoes relatively easily. So once your torpedo hits a target, of course, there's a big explosion and the boat goes down. So with a patrol boat, you're obviously a lot faster and speedier, but you are a lot more fragile. So to kill an enemy patrol boat, you need to take out a few different parts of their boat. You need to turn most of it black. So basically strafing is your best option. One of the problems with some of the early boats is they have a limited amount of ammo, so you can't take out the boats very quickly. Um, so you, you've really got to be a bit careful in that regard, and you've got to basically try and take somebody out before they take you out. It is very much um, a machine gun fest with patrol boats. So we've got the motor torpedo boat here, and we can see that he is going to go around this way, so we're going to try and hit him with a torpedo. We'll launch one fish out, and this might be a hit here because you know we've, we've got the aim on him, and we've we've got the idea. So, as you can see now, the aim's a little bit further around from where we launched from. So we'll see how well we go here. Now with depth charges, as you can see, we've got right alt. So that's mine as well set up. Uh, yours may differ. So simply with a, talk, with a depth charge is you basically want to get in front of the enemy and drop one off. And then it will sink and then go kaboom. Aircraft. Basically it's almost like bombing a enemy boat. Um, it's a very tricky thing to do and you're probably not going to get many kills with depth charges. But it's very, very um, funny when you do, basically. It's an enjoyable thing to do. 
Now, as I said before, generally with um, patrol boats, I tend to like to go for armor piercing belts just because they tend to do a bit more damage and tend to cause things like flooding damage a bit more and, and cause a lot more problems for the boats. Now, as you can see here, it's very hard to get in front of an enemy boat with a depth charge because, well, you're basically both going the same sort of speeds. Uh, I will try my best to get a kill on this, this bot boat. Uh, but as you can see, it is very tricky because, you know, if this was a combat situation, we'd both be shooting each other with, with machine guns right now. Just do a little bump on him. And we drop the depth charge. A bit close there. Boom. We managed to pull some damage to the back of his boat. You will get fragmentation damage, of course. So we're a little bit further ahead now. Drop another depth charge. Right underneath him. Boom. And there you go. Dead. Depth charges do cause a lot of damage, but they're very tricky to use. They're very finicky to use, and all I'll all see that's you know going to be like the mine system. They're not going to be that useful, in all honesty, because they they sort of they have a limited time in the water. Um, when mines come out, I will explain them in greater detail. So I'm going to go up to this destroyer, and we'll just uh, launch a torpedo. Right there. So torpedo goes out. We're relatively close, so we should get a hit. And boom. That's the end of the, the destroyer. And as you see, we've blown off the whole front of the boat there. So, yeah, relatively high amounts of damage. You know, and that's the thing with these PT boats, is if you can get close, you can cause a lot of damage to these big boats. You do, of course, have your anti-air defences as well. Same system goes for those. Really the same aiming goes. Um, with your, uh, when you're looking at distances, you know, it, it's the same aiming, you know, if you've got the target lock on it makes it easier. The only difference is, with machine guns, of course if you're firing at long distances, they're going to go quite high up in the air, and it takes quite a long time for them to drop. The other thing with the German machine guns is they have the, basically a flak shell on them. Um, they have the high explosive and fragmentation tracer shell and it's self-destroying. That's not the same for every nation. Um, with the armor piercing shell, it will just float on down. With that shell, it will explode in the air. Alrighty. So, I will leave it at that. If you have any questions, please let me know below. I'd love to hear your feedback on this one. Um, as I say, this is just a basic video, just with some of the information. If you need more information, please let me know. I'm more than happy to help. There are, of course, the... Um, rocket launched depth charges and rockets and things like that and look they're all very similar to tanks really you pretty much get the idea for those the main difference is that aiming system and that really can throw people off all right guys well thanks for watching and until next time this is me carl screwzilla out bye bye chris redfield jill valentine Barry Burton Rebecca Chambers Screezeller Steam and Sticks Albert Wesker Resident Evil <laughs>